Hey, I'm Creech and this is Creech and Cars. Today I'm going to go over everything you need to know about EV startup Canoe. I'll go over the company's brief history and important people, and then I'll go over what market segments Canoe is targeting and what models it has to offer. Finally, I'll give my opinion on whether or not the company will be successful. On this channel, I talk about car news, history, and culture, so if you like videos like this, please give the video a like, it helps me out a lot, and subscribe so you don't miss future videos. This is part of a series on the channel called Startup Showcase where I take a look at new startup car companies and their models. Let's get started in the beginning. Canoe was founded in California in 2017 and was initially called eVelocity. Canoe was started by former Deutsche Bank CFO Stefan Krauss and former BMW executive Ulrich Kranz. In 2019, the company was renamed Canoe and in September, they unveiled the first concept vehicle called the Electric Van Canoe. The concept was received well and it led to a deal with Hyundai where Hyundai would invest $87 billion over the course of five years and jointly develop a new EV platform with Canoe. But as things were getting off to a good start, Stefan Krauss had to resign due to personal issues and Ulrich Kranz took over as the company's CEO. Near the end of 2020, Canoe declared it would be going public and expected to raise $300 million in capital from the IPO, which would be used to jumpstart production. Canoe announced a couple more upcoming models that it had in the works and was building a relationship with Apple. But once again, there were changes to high-level management as the partnership with Hyundai was terminated and Ulrich Kranz, the remaining co-founder, resigned during an SEC investigation. Canoe kept pushing forward by beginning to lease and build space to start production. After this rocky start, Canoe was again able to build some solid relationships, this time with Walmart as well as with the federal government with plans to build vehicles for the DoD and NASA, more on that later. In April 2023, Canoe announced it had the factory space available in Oklahoma City to begin production. So that should bring you up to speed on the company's brief history. It hasn't been perfect, but Canoe has shown that it knows becoming a major player in the automotive world requires solid connections and partnerships across industries and sectors, and the partnerships that are still active are essentially holding Canoe together for now. Taking a look at the brand image and market segment, some people have said that Canoe's vehicles look similar to the Jeep Forward Control, which was a Jeep truck from the 50s and 60s, and I think there is a similarity here, but there is a bigger similarity to Jeep's brand image as a whole. Some people might disagree, but I think you can look at Canoe as basically being a fully electric Jeep brand. Even though there's no relation here, the design and purpose of the vehicles are similar, with Canoe focusing heavily on those who would use a truck or van to go off-roading to a campsite. The image the brand and vehicles give off is one of rugged utility, and even at the top spec, there is no real effort made to make the vehicle especially luxurious, which is refreshing to see in a world of luxury trucks and full-size SUVs dominating the roads. Canoe currently offers three models, which are all based on the same skateboard platform. This platform was developed in-house. It has a 112-inch wheelbase and can fit up to an 80 kilowatt hour battery. All vehicles will have the option for either rear wheel drive or all wheel drive and all of them will be steer by wire. Canoe says a majority of the crash test can be performed on the platform alone, so while it doesn't have things like airbags of course, the slim platform should be able to withstand impacts from all sides even without the car's body on it. Using this same platform for all vehicles does greatly reduce production costs and allows buyers to get into a canoe for just under $40,000, which is pretty cheap for a new electric vehicle. The first model is the lifestyle vehicle, which is the van. The lifestyle has canoe's signature styling with a rounded over cab appearance and the three pronged lights. On the inside, there are two seats up front like normal, and Canoe says the driver will have panoramic views with the large windshield, and below the windshield, there is also another window to help the driver see exactly where the front of the vehicle is. In the rear, things get even more interesting as there is lounge seating instead of a typical rear bench seat. Canoe says this allows for many people to sit around each other while also having more room than virtually any other car or SUV. However, with the lounge seats in place, cargo room is limited as far as what you can access from the rear. But there is a large amount of room between the front and rear seats, definitely enough for smaller items such as groceries and even enough space for some camping supplies. 
The delivery trim level is designed purely for work and replaces the rear seats with a large utility cargo space, much like what you would find on any other work van. The delivery trim has a 1500 pound payload capacity and obviously that trim is targeted more towards fleet buyers. Above that there are three sort of normal trim levels, there's the base, premium, and adventure. Like I said, the base model starts just under $40,000, but exact pricing hasn't been announced yet for the other models. You can expect the premium to be around fifty dollars and the Adventure to be around $60,000. All models come with a 200 mile range and about 350 horsepower. The base comes with five seats, but the premium has a larger allowance that adds enough room for two more passengers. The Adventure is essentially a special edition that comes with a unique paint color as well as unique roof racks and wheels. Canoe is also offering a pickup truck, which is just called the Canoe Pickup. As you can see, the design is pretty much the same for the cab portion of the truck, and then there is a truck bed that's pretty normal at first glance, but it's actually very versatile. The pickup is a mid-size, so about the size of a Tacoma or Colorado, but it has a built-in bed extender that looks much more solid than the old-fashioned extenders, and a piece of the side of the bed can fold out into a table or working surface on either side. There is an additional storage cubby in front of the rear fender, sort of like what Rivian does, and the bed can be illuminated to help you see at night. Also, in the normal position, the bed is 6 feet long, but in the extended position, it's 8 feet long, so definitely enough space for a little truck. There is also a frunk that opens with a little tailgate. This is a nice storage area to have, but it isn't separate from the cabin, so it may not be ideal for messier things like paint, but it is still nice to be able to lock up power tools. Even though the pickup is on the smaller side, it has an 1800 pound payload capacity, which can compete with many half ton options on the market right now. Like the van, it has a 200 mile range, but it gets up to 500 horsepower. With the extra power and much greater ground clearance over the lifestyle vehicle, the pickup would surely do better off road. The interior is essentially the same but without the back seats. It is an extended cab and looks like it has some small jump seats that you would see on something like the old Ford Ranger but it might just be extra space behind the seats. It appears that there is only one trim level for now and no pricing has been announced but you can pre-order one with a $100 refundable deposit. There's also a version of the truck called the Light Tactical Version or LTV which was tested by the US Department of Defense and the test reportedly went well. But as of now, there's no news of any orders or the DoD actually trying to use the vehicle. Lastly, there is the MPDV, which stands for Multi-Purpose Delivery Vehicle. This is similar to the delivery trim on the lifestyle vehicle in that it's oriented more towards fleet and commercial buyers, but CEO Tony Aquila has said that the goal is to make it as cheap and customizable as possible so that the vehicle will be the go-to option for small and medium businesses. The price target has been in the low 30s, but I doubt they will be able to accomplish this by the time the vehicle gets to production, and I would expect the MPDV to go for around 40000 while it's built on the same platform as the other models, it's obviously much larger and has a tall cargo area with 450 cubic feet of volume. Up front, the cabin is fairly similar to the pickup, except there is only one seat and the doors to the cabin are rear hinged. The sides of the van are very flat to allow for easy wrapping and there is a large hatch on the side as well to access the cargo area or to serve customers if you use it as a food truck for example. No performance numbers have been given yet, but like the other models, you can place a pre-order right now, which will unlock configurability as soon as that becomes available. So that should get you up to speed on Canoe, but with everything the company has been through and what it has going on now, will it be successful? Honestly, this is one of the toughest situations I've had to make a decision on yet. On one hand, Canoe's vehicles are weird and seem very niche almost too niche to have significant demand, but on the other hand, the company has been able to get in contact and make future plans with major players in both the public and private sector. So first, here are some good things about Canoe's future. Number one, as I've mentioned, is Canoe has some pretty good relationships with other large corporations and government agencies. Canoe has property across America devoted to production, R&D, and management, and for the lifestyle delivery van, Canoe has firm orders from fleet management companies King B and Zeba, as well as an order from Walmart, all of which total over 16,000 units to begin with, 
and options to order more. Canoe also has a $150,000 contract for assisting with NASA's Artemis program. As I said earlier, Canoe has factory space available and has said that by the end of 2023, they will be able to produce 20,000 lifestyle vehicles per year from the Oklahoma City factory. While Canoe seems to have gotten past its rough start, there are still some things to worry about. Number one, which is an issue for just about every EV startup, is having enough cash to get to and begin production so that the money from orders can begin to flow in. With Canoe specifically, I'm also concerned about demand. While it's similar to some off-road brands like Jeep or Rivian, with its purely rugged and utilitarian design, I think the market is more limited and the brand may do best within a larger conglomerate that can support it while the name and image get established. Canoe has shown that it can build good relationships, but it also has had some fall apart, like the major deal with Hyundai that fell through. Overall, like the vast majority of startups, the road will be tough, but Canoe definitely has the potential to build a niche outdoors and off-roading brand. So there's everything you need to know about EV startup Canoe. Let me know what you think about the brand and its models in the comments below. On this channel, I talk about car news like this, as well as history and culture, so if you like videos like this, take a look at the Startup Showcase playlist on the channel and subscribe so you don't miss future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.